Well, good morning and thank you so much for choosing us here at NBC Local 33 today. It's Monday, March 23rd. I'm Kelly M. Biley. And I'm Jared Jordan. Just about 6.30 on this Monday morning. We've got a lot to get to this morning, but we'll start with what we've been watching for about the past hour and a half. A big traffic alert happening on I-10 West. The interstate shut down right now. Meteorologist Jasmine Lomax keeping your eye on this for us. What's happening, Jasmine? That's right. Well, there has been a road closure that is on I-10 westbound. Now there was an accident right before LA-42. So now traffic is being diverted at LA-73 Prairieville. Congestion at this point is minimal, but you will want to find an alternative route. Now there was a stalled vehicle on I-10 East before Perkins, but now all lanes are open. Congestion is minimal. And finally, the right lane is blocked on I-10 East past the Dalrymple Drive due to an accident. Congestion is now approaching the Washington Street. So keep this in mind as you head out this morning. But besides that, the rest of the area is in green. Just make sure to buckle up and drive safely. The traffic is sponsored by Peyton Murphy at the Murphy Law Firm. Well, we're starting off on a warm note. 70s for most of the area. We're at 70. Gonzalez at 71, along with Lafayette and New Iberia. New Orleans at 70. Hammond and Kentwood, two of the spots sitting in the 60s right now. Expect these numbers to gradually increase. Now, currently our visibility is at 10, so we're at the maximum. Gonzalez, though, at 4 miles, and Hammond at 1.5. So if you're coming from either of these areas, and even New Roads, which is at 7, just take account of that reduced visibility as it could cause some issues but other than that really not much going on on the satellite and radar it's fairly quiet and that's really the case pretty much the entire day we start to see a break in the clouds and a little bit of sunshine uh, just before noon and unfortunately there is a slight chance for a scattered shower but other than that we mainly stay nice and dry as we head into Tuesday so again around 70 at 8 a.m. mostly cloudy to start the day then we start to see some sunshine around 2 81 then we start cooling down 74 by 8 p.m. Cool and quiet outside. Back to you. Thank you so much, Jasmine. The time right now coming up on 632, and Louisiana has the fastest growing rate of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the world now. That's according to Governor John Bell Edwards, who also said that those confirmed cases are increasing at the same steep angle as Italy and Spain. He was citing a University of Louisiana at Lafayette study there. The latest numbers from the State Department of Health show that 20 people have died from COVID-19 in Louisiana. There are now more than 830 confirmed cases, and the virus is present in more than than 50% of Louisiana's parishes. East Baton Rouge Parish has 20 confirmed cases, and there are 44 in the greater Baton Rouge area. Meanwhile, Governor Edwards' stay at home order goes into effect later today. NBC Local 33's Courtney Williams is live for us this morning with more on what that stay at home order means, what businesses will be open and closed, and Courtney, we also know the governor is hosting a town hall later tonight. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Jan. Well, it's a lot happening today, and that first is that stay-at-home order that Governor Edwards announced on yesterday, and this is all due to that fast-growing rate of positive cases here in the state. Now, with the, the past two weeks, there have been more than 800 cases, and Governor Edwards is just trying to get a hold on on those numbers and try to reduce that by putting the stay-at-home order in place. Now, that actually goes into effect today at five o'clock, and is expected to expire April 13th, but could go longer. He says within those last two weeks, uh, those number of cases here in the state have been more than any other state or country in the world, and he wants to flatten that curve by putting that order in place. Now, this does not mean you can't leave your home, but the time you should only go out is to go to essential places like the grocery store, a pharmacy to pick up any medication, and any other health care necessities like going to any doctor's appointments. You can take order takeout orders for any restaurants or go through a drive through You can also take a walk or ride a bike as long as you are six feet away from others. As for what you cannot do under the governor's order is go to work unless you are providing an essential service, visit friends and family if there is no urgent need, or visit loved ones in a hospital or any other care facilities. And Edward says these steps have to be taken now before it gets any worse. I don't think fear and panic are helpful. But being serious and understanding that, that we need to have a sense of urgency, you know, those things are helpful. Uh, we, we, want, we want people to take this seriously. We want people to comply. 
Now, happening tonight, Edwards will be joined by health experts and members of his administration to just talk about those latest developments on those cases here in the state, testing for the virus, as well as any resources that are available for any business that have been impacted. Now, this will air on our CW station, that is WBRL, or you can also go to our website at brproud.com where that will be live streamed, and that will be from 7 to 8 tonight. So you can definitely find more information on our website at brproud.com, or you can download our free Be Our Proud app. Reporting live at GOSEP, Courtney Williams, NBC Local 33 News. Courtney, thank you. Our Jonah Gilmore spoke with residents around the capital city after that stay at home order was announced. Jonah continues our team coverage this morning. As the state counts down to the governor's stay at home order, people in the capital city are making last minute runs. I have food. I'm good. I'm good. I'm making sure my parents are straight, so I'm good. I'm pretty sure I have everything. Sunday, the governor announced the order will take effect Monday and last until April 13th, if not longer. I expected it, knew it was coming. It was just a matter of when. Ginger Thibodeau says she's aware of the order and will also adhere to the governor's plea. Let's be good neighbors. Let's be good Louisianans. Where I live in the retirement community, most of the ladies where I live are 80 years old. They don't drive, they can't get out, so I'm going to have to go check on them even if it's just through the door. As shoppers load up and the state prepares for a new norm, people say they'll continue doing their part. I'll do the best I can. I think I have everything I need. Jonah Gilmore, NBC Local 33 News. And many businesses have been ordered to close, but some seem to sort of fall in that gray area, like car dealerships. Team Honda sales manager John Brown says he's noticed a significant difference in business, however, during the pandemic. Typically, he said they see customers come in when spring kicks off. He also said they have since increased sanitary stations at the dealership, and they're also scaling back on the number of employees who are on site at any one particular time. Brown says all anyone can do during this difficult time is to try to adapt. A lot of times what we do to accommodate the customers, obviously, it, uh, we, we adapt with the business. So we try and set our appointments up where customers can come in, have the vehicle pulled up curbside, show it to them, and, and, and really try and make the transaction, transaction uh, as fast as possible for them. And Brown also said detailing and car washes have stopped for the time being, citing the safety of workers and customers. Meanwhile, COVID-19 drive through testing will resume today across the capital city. The Baton Rouge General Mid-City site will be open for coronavirus testing. Only patients with orders faxed from their physicians will be able to receive a test. Our Lady of the Lake will also resume testing today. Both Baton Rouge and Ascension locations will test patients with doctor referrals from the hospital. Now, meanwhile, Governor Edwards' shelter-in-place order is affecting student meal services across the area. Both Ascension and Livingston parishes say they are suspending their grab-and-go meal service effective immediately. The move cl uh, comes, closes actually nearly 20 meal sites for students in the greater Baton Rouge area. The East Baton Rouge Parish School District says they will continue their meal service today, but will work to find different options in order to provide those meals. Three other parishes in the area, East Feliciana, St. James, and St. Helena parishes have also announced that they are suspending services. All three of them did make the statement on social media. St. James and St. Helena officials say that they're canceling after a school district employee in each parish tested positive for COVID-19. And the coronavirus pandemic is forcing the public to change the way that we handle day-to-day -day life. And those changes are now affecting the church. NBC Local 33's Kara St. Cyr shows us how one church is using creativity to reach their congregation. Some people might say that you can find religion in the pews and the hymn books tucked away inside of a church. One place people want to be right now more than anything is in their churches. But when Father Michael Alello looks at the empty building where his congregation met just last week, he sees an opportunity. The church is not a building. The church is the people, the people that make up the community. And so the community is dispersed. COVID-19 has parishioners isolated inside their homes, unable to make it to Sunday Mass. But Father Alello says he can use this to his advantage. If the people can't come to Mass, he says he'll bring the Mass to them. I sat down in my chair the, uh, yesterday and recorded a message for this weekend, allowing people to uh, be able to, to hear from me as their pastor. He sets up his mic, then his camera, and hits record. 
The messages aren't full homilies, but it's something. It's something his congregation can think about and hold on to during a time when some people need the comfort of the church. It's given us an opportunity to have a very interactive moment with our folks, even though we can't be together. Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas More. He's uploaded a few small tidbits to YouTube here and there to get St. Thomas More through the first week without Mass. Amen. But ultimately, he hopes he can help a much broader group through this tough time. I hope it's inviting people to sit with their God, to pray, to reflect, and to put their hope and their trust in Him. So let's begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because to Father Alello, it's not the pews or even the building that makes the church. It's the people and the connection. Kara St. Cyr, NBC, Local 33 News. And we do have a programming alert for you this morning. Be sure to tune in tonight to our CW station, WBRL, as we host Governor John Bell Edwards' roundtable discussion surrounding coronavirus in Louisiana. The governor will be joined by his administration and health experts to discuss the latest updates on COVID-19, as well as the state's capacity for testing. That roundtable is scheduled to air at 7 o'clock tonight. We will also be streaming it on our website, brproud.com, and on all of our social media platforms. All right, the time now is 641 on this Monday morning. A state leader is warning folks to be vigilant and take the latest stay-at-home order seriously amid the coronavirus pandemic. It comes after he was diagnosed with the virus himself. We'll talk with DOTD Secretary Sean Wilson next.